This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects tutorial, we will learn how to make this revealing montage. It's easier than it looks, and I'll reveal how it's made with a minimal amount of puns. In After Effects, we are going to do a few steps. The first thing is to bring in our footage, then we will add some elements, and then we will use those elements to define where we can see the footage. Then we're going to move some things around, and uh, at that point we should be done. So, I've already imported my footage, and I've put it in a bin. So I'm going to create a new composition. I'm going to use the HDTV 1080 25 frames a second preset, and we're going to have a width of 1920 and a height of 1080. Now, that's only important because when I start calling out numbers and we start looking at numbers, just be aware that my frame size is this big, yours might be different. And we are going to rename this to be uh, Montage. All right, we're going to take our footage and bring that out here. Great. So now we have all of our footage. You can see it's different lengths and, you know, some of these might even be different sizes. So let's um, let's select them. OK, and let's pre-compose them. So I'm going to pre-compose. I'm going to call this A, or you can call it footage A or, you know, foot A. So footage A should be good. And we're going to move all of the attributes into the new composition. Now, that's so that we can do things to this footage in here, like we can, you know, we can time remap it. We could put other footage on top of this and we could, you know, we just edit it up in here. So if we need to do that, we can. And out here in this comp, it's going to have the same frame size that uh, that we left. So we're going to pre-compose this one as well. I just hit control shift C and that's going to be footage uh, B, I believe, for that. And we're going to again move all the attributes into the new composition. Uh, you can also go layer, pre-compose, if that's something you want to do. So again, we're going to go footage and uh, footage C, I guess. Good. And the final one, that's going to be footage D. Okay. So we have our footage and our footage is in here nicely. Now we need to create things that are going to reveal that footage. Okay. So what that means is I'm going to first create uh, that nice sort of uh, cross grid pattern that went through here. So I'm going to make sure I have nothing selected and then I'm going to double click on the rectangle. I'm going to make sure it has a fill with a brightness of 10%, no stroke needed. Then I go into this rectangle, go to the rectangle path and we're going to unlink the properties of its size and we're going to multiply this 1920 by two, all right, and uh, then we'll give it a height of 10. Then we're going to increase this a little bit so that it is 3,860. So it is, it's 20, you know, 20 pixels larger than uh, being uh, twice the width. So this will become important uh, a little bit later. So I'm just going to duplicate that path. And on the second path, we're going to be 10 pixels by 1080 pixels times two. All right, and then we're going to increase this one by 20 as well. So why we did that is so that we could perhaps drag this all the way to the edge here and have it be like all the way off, you know, just like this. And it's not uh, sticking over the edge here. So if we animate it coming across this way, it's not going to be like, you know, this little artifact here, like it's not going to be missing parts. So this has to be larger than uh, you could possibly need. So you can make this like infinitely large if you want, but uh, you know, that's just giving you the rationale for why it would be one size and not a different size. All right. So we're going to uh, just reset the transformations there. So it's in the middle. Good. Now we are going to create some solids. You can create solids by right clicking, going new solid. I've already made a bunch, so I'm just going to grab them out of here. We have a yellow one, blue one, red one, green one, and a black one. I'm going to put the black one uh, at the bottom behind everything, and I'm going to stretch it up to be very, very big. This is basically like a, a safety. So 
uh, anything that might bleed through, I have this to uh, catch it. Now I'm also going to take these things and we're going to arrange them uh, like so. So this will come, come here, have the red one here, and uh, I'm holding down uh, control whenever I move these things or command to get this, this snap. All right, like this. Okay, so far so good. Now what I'm gonna do is gonna hit Y and I'm gonna drag, uh, drag its anchor point to be in the center, all right? Uh, I don't really wanna keep selecting this, so I'm just gonna turn that off. Mm -hmm. Make sure all their anchor points come to the middle. Perfect, just like that. Now you can grab all those, grab their scale and uh, increase it if you would like, like so, so that they are again larger than we need. We're gonna take them all and we're gonna parent them to that shape layer one. And you're gonna to wanna to parent your black solid to shape layer one or not. It's really just here to catch anything that comes through. So let's say we wanted sort of like a white line instead, you might use a white solid to catch any of the errant pixels that may show through. So that's just, my own preference, trying to save my own bacon for later. So now if I lock all of those layers and I just move this shape layer here, uh, it looks like we are moving these things around. Each of these will now represent the footage that's gonna be behind it. And I'm able to, you know, drag this down here without anything, you know, being peculiar. So I could go from full green to full blue, to full red, to full yellow, like this, all right? And I would recommend if you're just working on the timing of moving this, that uh, now is a good time to do it. So you can poke out the eye of all of this footage so you're not wasting valuable resources rendering it. You can call up the position of this shape layer here and uh, we can start animating it by setting keyframes. So let's say we uh, animate this to go over here and then we come down here and then it's gonna stick around there for a while. So go ahead a bit and then set a keyframe of the same thing. And then we go ahead a bit, move over here and uh, you know, however this works. So just like this, a few, a few little movements and we're gonna go keyframe assistant, easy ease them all. And then, uh, you know, we can do things like we can grab their handles and we can move them, you know, kind of like that. So dragging their handles around, you know, so it has this kind of motion, whoosh, and then kind of like that. I don't, uh, I don't care for this kind of curve, so I'm going to select them, all the keyframes. I'm going to right click, keyframe interpretation, interpolation, sorry, and uh, then go to linear, hit okay. Now those are straight lines, but they are still a little warped in time, so. I think that works out pretty well. So let's uh, let's go ahead and make the footage come through. So I'm going to put all the footage to be under each of those. And now I'm gonna select all of the footage and I'm gonna go here to its track mat. If you don't have that, toggle switches and modes here. And we are going to go alpha mat, all right? Now what that means is that each of these footage elements will reference the uh, the green solid or the red solid or whatever solid to define where they are showing. So it's basically looking at the layer above and asking, well, where are your alpha pixels? Okay, well, then I'm gonna make mine like yours. So, you know, when you can see this is yellow, well now, instead of this being yellow, it's, we don't look at it, but the layer below it knows to display itself there, so. That much is pretty good. So you've got basic split screen stuff going on. And you're also able to, you know, keyframe the motion of these around if you want. So if you scale them up, you can move them about. And what I did was I automated some of their movement uh, in relation to this solid moving around. So the first thing I did because I knew I was going to move these was I scaled these up. All right, so I scaled them up to like uh, 125. So I just have a little room to play with. And then I put on their position an expression that is based 
on the position of this shape layer. So hold down Alt and click on the position there, and uh, we'll get the ability to type in an expression. And we're going to start by setting up a couple uh, couple variables. So we're going to say x equals, and we're going to say 960, which is the point in the center. Uh, 960 subtract and subtract the x value of the shape layer position. So what's the difference between 960 and where it is presently? And then we're going to put that in brackets. All right, so right there. And then we are going to multiply that by, say, 0.25, and we're going to add a little semicolon at the end. Okay, now copy that. Well, the next line, and we're going to say, instead of x, we're going to say y. And y is going to be 540 minus uh, this comp layer's position 1. So we're going to look at shape layer. We're going to look at this part of the shape layer. So position part 0 is x, and position part 1 is the y coordinate. Okay, and then multiply that by 0.25 as well. Okay, cool. And then the final output of this is going to be value. So the value this thing usually is. And then we're going to add to that x comma y. All right, hit return. And you can see it has moved now. All right, so it's moving around as this thing is also moving. So that's pretty neat. And you can change the positive and negatives on here if you'd like to have it move either, you know, in the same direction as as this thing, or you could have it move in the reverse direction. And you also have the ability to still keyframe it. So, you know, you could have it uh, you could have it start with a scale and position here. And you know you want it to end up like this, but at the start, you could make it have a scale of 100%, you know, and a position that is still at 960 by 540, you know, or wherever. Like you could just move it and position it to be right there. And then before all the fun starts, we zoom in and then we move. Or we could even move this to start getting different as this move happens. So that's a good way to hide our change into this split screen uh, mosaic montage. So I think that's a, that's a good place to stop because now you know how to get in and out of this kind of thing. So, you know, hopefully this has uh, taught you a thing or two about uh, how to make this kind of thing and uh, how to show and hide footage. This has been Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com, your source for royalty-free sound effects and music. I'm sure every montage needs some music, so you should definitely go pick some up and maybe some whooshing around uh, sound effects. That would be pretty rad. If you want to check out more tutorials on Premium Beat, check out the blog. There's great stuff there by myself and other contributors. And if you want to see more of my stuff, check out uh, E.C. Abrams on the YouTube or tweet at me at E.C. Abrams or hit me up at EvanAbrams.com. There's a bunch of good stuff there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to Premium Beat in all of its forms, and I'll see you around the internet. Thanks again, and have a nice day.